Move over tardigrades, as our immortal little friends. This animal survived for 46,000 years frozen in Serbian permafrost. Now, tardigrades are incredible. They can survive in a state of torpor, which is where they lower their metabolic state and essentially deactivate for about 100 years and wake up just fine, probably longer. Some researchers did claim that they quantum entangled a tardigrade that is still up for debate. But no, these guys are the true immortals. If you're not in biological sciences, you may not recognize this guy immediately, C. elegans. That should be familiar to you because C. elegans is one of our model organisms that we have in science, along with a few others, including mice. Basically, they get all the science run on them. Now, you probably have heard an awful lot about zombie organisms being retrieved from permafrost in recent years. Yes, they did call it that. Yes, they did call it a zombie virus, but not for the reasons you're thinking. This is permafrost. This is a kind of ice that does not melt every year. It remains frozen, and in this case, it's been frozen for tens of thousands of years. Whatever little organisms were active during the first freeze were left there. That can include things like our near-immortal little buddies, the tardigrades. We've actually found these guys on every continent on Earth, including the Antarctic. But recently, we found that C. elegans, which are a roundworm and a nematode, are actually near-immortal. They could be frozen for 46,000 years and be given some water in a warm environment, and they just come to life. And if you're wondering if these guys could be a problem for people, maybe. First thing, viruses are excellently specialized, but there's some caveats. If a virus is able to infect a new host that was similar enough to its original host, there's a little bit of a stutter period. This is where they don't infect very effectively, and the immune system has a chance to try to fight it off before it causes an illness that could ultimately be spread. If it is successful in its first stutter and overcomes the host's immune system, then it can just demolish through a population. We saw that with things like smallpox. People in North America who hadn't been exposed to it ever, or perhaps had not been exposed to it in 20,000 to 40,000 years, they had no immunity. So the possibility that one of these little guys infected something like, let's say, a Neanderthal or early people, and ended up in the permafrost, I couldn't really tell you how likely that is. Possible? Yes, not on the high list of my worries. No, the high list of my worries are bird flu. And you know, the rampant demolishing of our scientific infrastructure, our alert systems. Yeah, that worries me a lot. Now, lastly, I do appreciate that water bears are charismatic when you get down to it. They're also terrifying. I can have an appreciation for C. elegans, our new immortal friends, also being kind of cute, but kind of horrifying under an electron microscope. Most things are actually horrifying under EM.